Ross, you're the, the co-producer and star of Bipolarize, a, an amazing documentary really about your life, but also you, the documentary does such a beautiful job of showing your life story and also offering a, a pretty powerful reflection on the current mental health system, especially in Canada, but I think it also will parallel into other, other countries as well. And I guess I just wanted to have you speak for a few minutes about you know, what that, that whole process has been like for you of, of doing your own work to, to heal as well as looking at the system at large. Wow, that's a great question, Jesse. I think, you know, what I discovered, I think early on, so I'm 43 now, but at 21 I had what was really like a break. And, uh, you know, what I learned about our system, and, you know, I think everyone's in the system doing the best they can, but we have kind of like more of a, a one-dimensional approach to treatment. And I think as I kind of went on my journey, what I discovered is is that there's more kind of a mind body spirit approach to addressing root cause resolution. I think that's one of the what challenges. You mean root cause resolution? Well, I think one of the challenges we're facing right now is that the way the system's set up is that we have, you know, people going into whether it's their GP or their psychiatrist, you know, and expressing symptoms. And with those expression of symptoms, there's usually a prescription pad that's pulled out and these prescriptions and you know, I'm not against medication, there's definitely a place for it. But the challenge is, is these medications are only kind of like band-aid solutions. A little bit like numbing the symptoms. Exactly, you know, and so one of the challenges, or there's a couple challenges, and just, you know, from my own experience is that, you know, the medications, they can kind of alleviate symptoms a little bit, but then the challenges is that it really makes it that much more difficult and it made it more difficult for me to actually get to the root cause of symptoms. You know, so for me it was a long, long journey, and then by the time I got to this place where I was able to kind of detox, which was lithium, which was the drug that I was taking, um, you know, immediately I felt my life force coming back. You know, one of the challenges for me is that I had such extreme side effects that were just kind of more debilitating that once I was able to detox, then I was able to actually have my life force come back. Once my life force came back, I was able to really kind of address the root cause reasons that were causing symptoms in the first place. So root cause is the difference between trying to numb a symptom as, to, as compared to understanding where that symptom actually is coming from. For example, our, our childhood or even biochemical imbalances, any of the above, yes? Exactly, yes. You know, I mean, one of the, the couple of things I discovered, one of which was, you know, I had this you know, amazing dad, great guy, you know, entrepreneur. challenge for him was, and I think, is that he really was not coming from a generation, and I think that things have changed a lot now, where he wasn't really addressing, you know, some of his traumas that went on in his life. And so, as I started to uncover some of the, the father-son traumas, the challenges that went on, you know, it was really important to me to start to go, okay, wow, there's things that he didn't address that kind of passed on, me being the prodigal son. And then as a result of that, once I was able to kind of address some of those traumas, because there were traumas that kind of built up over time, I started to learn that, wow, these traumas actually sit in the body. They're a discordant energy. And when that discordant energy, it can kind of wreak all sorts of symptoms. And I think for me, they played out as anxiety and depression. And then once I was able to address and learn things like, you know, somatic therapies, uh, where you actually get to, you know, very body-centered therapy where you get to identify, you know, where the trauma is sitting in the body. And then with really skilled practitioners, you know, allowing that energy to kind of move out of the body. You know, I was starting to experience, you know, later in my life, so we're talking like late 30s, getting into my 40s, where instead of having like what was a really uncomfortable energy that was causing symptoms, causing discomfort, I think really getting in the way of so much of my life, that once that started to release, then I got to have this first sense experience of what, what it is for my nervous system to be able to regulate on its own. Once that contempt, uh, you know, my container, the body started to empty of some of these traumas, you know, instead of it being discordant energy, all of a sudden inspiration, creativity started to flow through and life started to unfold and it's just kind of what I consider to be like a miraculous way. So you know, I really got to experience firsthand what it is like to number one, have traumas built up over a lifetime, and then to release those traumas and just to see how you know, things can go into a more of a, a balance, order, and flow of life. So Ross, I hear you in, in what you're sharing with me, I hear you describing these the traumas, and I know a lot of people may not understand that trauma isn't just uh, a physical or sexual abuse or a war or a car wreck, but what you're describing is, because I've seen the movie and I, I, I know your story, right. is that the way that, that you grew up in a, in a father that was all ultimately very loving, but also uh, sort of holding a very high standard to you. Right. That that way of being in relationship with your father brought up a lot of anxiety and, and things that eventually 
got diagnosed or misdiagnosed as as bipolar. Right. Right. That, right. Okay, I'm understanding correctly. Yeah. Yeah, and I think too, it just you know, I think it was just it was it was so much there was so much pressure pressure to perform pressure to succeed, and uh, and with that, I think just that just added on that was just another level of trauma. I think there's there's so many kind of minute or minor layers to trauma that I think get overlooked and. It wasn't until I started to really uncover that and look into it and then release it. And it was, it was incredible for me because this experience of releasing trauma from the body through somatic experiences, um, therapies that I discovered, you know, all of a sudden I remember this one experience where it was literally like I could feel like heat rushing out of my hands, out of my fingers, out of my feet. It was just like this energy flowing out of the body. And to feel that, again, this whole sense of the container emptying and that sense of peace and the fact that what I started to learn moving forward is that once the trauma started to clear, then I could actually go through and I could have days where there was challenges or difficult days, but I was no longer getting triggered into what would be like a very dissociative state. I was actually, my body was able to self-regulate. I was able to um, handle things and handle what life was throwing at me and challenges and stresses in a much more different way that just like it made, made the living experience that much more enjoyable. Right, right. That's the second time you've mentioned uh, emptying the container. And I just get the image of when you say that, that you know, as you learned how to get these discordant energies out of your body that were uh, the experiences of anxiety, depression, mania, whatever it is, that as those cleared from you, you all of a sudden had room for inspiration, creativity, and, and I'm also hearing you say that your, your window of tolerance, your window of being able to tolerate your days got bigger and bigger. Right. right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and I think to me what's been the, the greatest gift is that, you know, I think we're always, I think all of us have levels of trauma that we're working through. I think when I think about now where I'm at, it's like a lot of the heavy lifting is done. I think there's always things to continue to work through and to always be able to, to balance, you know, internally. But I spent most of my life where I had a lot of that trauma in what was like a dissociative state, you know. So to be like, you know, you know in my 40s now and to know that things can happen, but I no longer move into that dissociative state is just, it's, it's a miracle to me because I could literally, I remember there's times where I'd be like, you know, my late thirties and all of a sudden the littlest trigger could happen because I hadn't really addressed it, addressed these traumas and the littlest trigger. And next thing I know, I'm feeling like a little five or a six year old that can't speak, you know, and to be an adult and to be doing that and to have that experience was really, really frustrating. So to be in this place now or like, you know, bring all of life on and to know that the body can self-regulate is just, uh, yeah. There's a lot more confidence, <laughs> you know, that comes from that from it that place. It sounds like something that, that you've really had to earn. It's not that some people are gifted this and some people right. aren't. It's that life happens and and you know these experiences happen and then a person ends up either feeling hyper anxious or hyper depressed right. or quote unquote normal. But because you've dedicated yourself for the last what five six years now, right? I'd say yeah. I mean, I really I really consider like the last twenty years is where I was dedicating, and it, and I think it's and it's an ongoing dedication. But yeah, but it's really is uh, yeah, it's really important to me to get to the bottom of these things and wonder why. Like, gosh, what is this like? There's this feeling for a lot of my life of like crawling out of my skin to only learn that wow, unresolved trauma can really wreak havoc and presents all sorts of symptoms. I mean, the whole spectrum. I mean, you know bipolar symptoms, anxiety, schizophrenic symptoms. I mean, when that trauma is unresolved, that can be like a, an undercurrent to so many of the disorders that people are actually you know, getting diagnosed with today. Yeah, and this, this is perfect. This is my, my other question for you, Ross, is you know, from what you just said there and how, how these symptoms are getting diagnosed and then prescribed on, and, and I'm with you that the medications have their place. Yep. I've also worked with so many people that are frustrated that they've been put on so many medications and really ultimately want to get off of them but don't know how. Right. I guess what I want to know both from you personally and from people you've maybe met since you've released Bipolarized and, and started this journey for yourself, uh, levels of, of anger or frustration about the current system that you know, that, that I've been sort of thrown into this label and, and treated a certain way where all along, if somebody had just asked me, wait, why is this happening? Right. You could have had a whole different life, right? I, I wonder how that plays out for you and others. Absolutely, you know, I think, I think it's a big, I think we're in this, um, I think we're in a transition time. I think it's an exciting time. Definitely. But I also think, yeah, it's just, I think one of the challenges that I know is my experience and I hear this over and over again, that, um, you know, I think it's just a big part of like just my, my whole desire to educate moving forward is that, you know, I think the unfortunate part for me, and I was in this place, I think when, when I was told by, you know, a doctor that, you know, you now have this disease, you have it for life, and you're not gonna have to take medication for life, it set up, which was very much a victim 
mentality, you know. And I played out that victim mentality for, for many, many years to the point where I remember I would stop and start things and people were like, gosh, you, you seem like you have it all to get, to get together and get it going. I'd be like, ah, oh, well, you know what, but I'm bipolar and I just I had this disease and I literally, I was using this, what was this diagnosis and this label to really kind of get in the way of my own life. And, mm-hmm. you know, when I, when I work with people now and, and when I do coaching with people now, I think one of the biggest things that helped me in my transition, and I, if it's something I try and impart at the beginning of this process with people is they're kind of going on their own very unique journey, is that the moment I started to look at these symptoms as gifts, and when I changed that and mm. flipped to that mm-hmm. paradigm, mm-hmm. I got out of my victim mentality, and then as soon as I was like, okay, what are these gifts, what are these symptoms here to teach me? Then everything shifted, and then literally the universe was able to conspire, all these different therapists started coming in, all these somatic therapies started coming in, all these energy healers started coming in to literally support me on where I wanted to go forward. So yeah, symptoms as gifts to transform was like the, it was, was my biggest wake up call. I love those words you just spoke that, you know, that invitation to start to look at these symptoms as gifts, as, yeah. as what are they trying to teach you, or why, yeah. again, why are they there? Yeah, right, what so. are the lessons? And then everything, yeah, everything can start to shift when you're, when you're looking at it from that perspective, and that's what really started to make things shift for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ross, I'm remembering this, the one part of the, the movie, Bipolarized, where you worked with Dr. Peter Levine, and there's a scene in the movie where you speak with him about uh, your, your inner child and, and being with your father in a certain container that brought forth a lot of healing for you. I, was, I want to talk to you for a few minutes about inner child and healthy reparenting. I think a lot of people don't even know what these words mean. So that's one part of how you would describe it. Also to speak to how, how that's played out for you or continues to play out for you in terms of actually understanding the roots as to how things happen for you. If you hadn't ever been willing to look at your inner child or your development, how would that have changed things? Right. Well, I think, it's, I think it's a great question. I think that that piece of work I did with, with Dr. Levine on camera for the film, you know, it was amazing to me because, first of all, I think he's a really gifted somatic. I think he's a pioneer when it comes to trauma therapy. And, you know, he, he took me through this piece, which, you know, it was about an hour. I think it only translates to a few minutes in the film. But, you know, what he got me to do is really this whole exercise of going back and playing, you know, I, he said, you know, imagine yourself as a seven-year-old, imagine your father as, you know, a seven-year-old, and just got us kind of playing as those two little kids. And it was an amazing for me, because I felt like there was like years of anger and resentment and frustration that I was having towards my father. And in like an hour session, you know, it's like, that's what made me aware of this, like how the power of somatic therapies is that it doesn't need to take years and years and years to uncover and release something. I literally felt like I had just like waves of stuff come off me when I got to actually have compassion from my father and what he went through. And it was like, it was in that instant, there was like recognition. And in that recognition, there was just this massive release where I just felt like it was just, yeah, no longer carrying those burdens, no longer carrying those frustrations. And it was like, and it just allowed me to move forward in a way that, you know, that I never even dreamed possible until I had that, you know, hour session with him. And I hear that, you know, it's the feeling that happened for you with that right. work as opposed to a bunch of thoughts. Right, or a bunch of talking. You know? Right, or yeah. a bunch of talking. Like connecting it into the body, you know, it's yeah. just like, which is just, it's been a huge uh, epiphany or wake up for me. Like I did a lot of amazing talk therapies for many, many years, but it wasn't until I really started to get into the somatic, the talk therapy, and then combining it all where I was really getting into the body. That's when you started to see bigger shifts yeah. happening in, in yeah, the healing yeah. process. Because before, there, before, I think, the challenge when it was just only talk therapy is that so much of it was in my head. And then for me, it was a danger because then spending too much time in your head, you're losing that sensation of the connection to the body. So, you know, it was just, yeah, it was, that, was a, that was just a big one for me, you know, coming later in life in the journey of learning about these somatic therapies. Right. And how, how would you just, in, in a nutshell, define inner child work or what it means to healthy reparent ourselves? Well, I think just, I, I think what's happened for me through the journey, it's funny because I'm 43 now, I, I feel more like a little kid now, <laughs> more than ever before. I feel, I feel younger, I feel more vibrant as a result of doing this work. And, and I feel like that sense of getting to play um, that I didn't have before. And you know, now I have, I have two kids. You know, and I think that's just as I look at that reflection of them and, and, and getting to play that out and to, you know, there's gotta be mistakes made. There's no perfect parenting. There's no rule book for it. But I think just that sense of, you know, wanting to just to, to be that, that 
present parent, but also had that sense of play and childlike quality that they always remind me of. It's just what, uh, you know, that's what I find is the gift. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. keeps coming back. Definitely. So, I guess, yeah, I guess what I'm wondering is that from my own experience, both as a therapist and a, and a client, uh, inner child work is it's almost like being able to take and identify where we had emotional and or physical wounds right. in our childhood and whether it's very young or teenage years or whatever in that early de developmental stages to be able to identify those first and foremost and then there's different modalities right different ways of going in there to, to work with that right but for you just talking about it wasn't the same as actually doing the somatic body centered work yep. and, and so what what exactly how would you articulate it that it's like to take your current healthy adult self and and let him become the healthy father for not only your biological children but for little Ross who you now realize didn't have the the healthiest father emotionally right. to look up to no I think it's a great I think it's a great question too because I think what I'm able to do now that I just wasn't able to do before as a result of really getting into the body and doing the child work doing these somatic therapies is that I have more of a gentle approach to myself, I have more of a, a kind approach to myself. Whereas I think when some of these things were unresolved, there was just these voices that used to just constantly want to just beat me down and beat me down. And whose voice do you think those might have been? I think it was, I think it was dad, you know, it's like dad like just you. really, you know, it was the dad, it was the, it was the be perfect, you got to be perfect. And so, so you almost adopted his voice yeah. as, as, if, as if it was your own. Yeah. Until you did this work, you started to realize. Because exactly. he had that piece, right? You know, and From he had his never father. done that work. Exactly. Yeah. So because he hadn't had that piece and hadn't done his work, of course. He passed it on. History repeats itself until we choose to really break the chains you know, of dysfunction. And I, you know, he passed in 2009 on my mom's birthday, but I know that he's smiling down now because you know, wherever he is and wherever he resides, whatever dimensions, it's just like, it's almost like the work, you know, the work has been, been done and, uh, and the fact that I feel like, you know, and I feel like I'm still, I get to communicate with him, and, and I feel like there's just, there's a sense of peace knowing that, um, you know, we did it. Yeah. yeah. And you said something so powerful, too, that his dad had done that for him, right. and because he didn't do any work on himself, he passed it on to you. You chose to do this work. You're breaking the cycle, right? I mean, that's just so important, I think, for the inner child work, is to realize, majoritively, our, our parents are not doing this maliciously or... No. or with any malintent, it's really just a, a multi-generational imbalance pattern that yep. gets passed on, yes? Yeah, and I think that's what's exciting about this time right now is I think, you know, my, my parents' generation, it was more, you were really ahead of your time if you were like starting to do this work. I think it was just more, you know, that was the generation of, you know, stiff upper lip and you just, you get it done and you drive through, but you don't really address what's going on. And I think that we're this very exciting time now where I think people are open. Not only people are open, but people are now searching. People are tired and want to break these chains of dysfunction. And I get excited just for the possibility of like where humanity is moving forward because people are really starting to become conscious and look at this stuff. You know, we really can make changes. Yeah, and changes are happening. You know? It's very exciting. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah. And so I, I'm aware of right now. I'm I'm sitting with a man that has gone from straight jackets and lots of lithium and other, you know, prescribed substances as well. Right. You, you've, you know, you've lived quite a, a life in that sense, and now here you are, 43, married, two kids, mm -hmm. launching your own healing center in Costa Rica. Uh, just wondering, as you look at all that, what's that like for you to realize, like, wow, like what a change, and on top of that, to recognize that those who were there to quote unquote help you were the same ones that were saying, you know, just, just stay small and just stay on these meds and, and you're gonna have a good life, sort of. Uh, you know, to, I guess, I don't know, I'm just amazed by that and I'm just curious, like, how is it for you to just sit with yourself now at, at this stage in your life as a, as a life coach and a I teacher? Think, yeah, you know, it's, an, it's just an exciting time. I feel, I feel grateful. I feel like I never, I feel like it's a, it's a rebirth. It's a new life. I have such gratitude for actually being in my body and, and, and just feeling all of my feelings, having a having the tools now to kind of work through things. Um, so it's just, there's just a ton of, ton of gratitude that I think I just feel every second. And the fact that how things are unfolding now and, and the fact that what I went through is just really what led me to my work and my mission. And, you know, I think, you know, and I'm sure, I don't know how you feel the same too, way too, but it's just like, I feel like this is, all of this work is just, 
it's like nourishment for the soul. Like I get so excited when. Oh, you mean to be of service to yeah, others, to help yeah. others out in this way? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's Definitely. just this. It's just it's such an amazing nourishment, and there's no, you can't put a price tag on it. It's just it's 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 incredible. So I just feel so lucky. And when I you know when I see, when I'm working with clients now, when I see like the light bulbs come on or I see that like there's just something where they just, you know, something said and they just get it. And you know, because we're all unique individuals, you know? And, and so my different, my journey is different from their journey, but there's always this reflection going on. And when you see the light bulbs, all these little light bulbs coming on and you see the shift start to happen, I mean, that's, it's priceless. It's so, it's so amazing to see that. It's so amazing to be part of that. It's a privilege to work with people and do that now. And it kind of tickles or reminds you too of your own healing process, right? Like for every time you see another person. Yeah wake up a little bit, it's yeah. like, oh, that's how I was doing exactly. it. Exactly, <laughs> and that's just it. It's like looking and going, wow, I remember that stage, I remember that stage, and you know, it's just, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a mind blower sometimes. But it's just, it's, um, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to get to do it. Definitely, man, well, it's, it's just, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm in awe of, of how, how much you've transformed yourself, and I'm in awe of how much you're already impacting so many people's lives, and I'm so excited for all the impact you're going to continue to create, man, as a, as a living example of everything that, that I believe in, everything that I've, I've spent time studying and practicing as well. And I know that there is a growing community out there of people that are wanting to, to wake up and stop just living a, a numbed out life, yeah. right? Yeah. Whether it's done through legal prescribed substances or illegal ones or no. whatever way, right? We're, we're, we are in an exciting time, man. Yeah, it is exciting. You know, and I think that's too what I just noticed like every day. Um, just how everyone's just linking arms like there's just so much support out there and as people are searching for it now It's like everyone's finding each other and like there's just this I don't know I keep thinking about the whole the hundredth monkey rule, you know, I don't know the hundredth monkey. I know okay, so the story I was told on it I guess there's different ways to explain it, but Hundredth monkey is this whole thing concept of where there's these monkeys on an island and they went down and they basically this one monkey went and, and put his banana in the water washed his, washed his banana and ate the banana Second monkey did that, third monkey did that. By the time the hundredth monkey did that on that island, through quantum physics, all the other monkeys on all the other surrounding islands went down and washed their banana and ate their banana. So what I get excited about is the fact that this awakening that's happening on the planet, everyone linking arms, is this opportunity where when we hit that kind of critical mass, everyone around the planet is going to get, you know, the, the awakening, the awareness, the possibility of like, wow, we can address all our root cause symptoms and we can actually just move forward and we can really create like, you know, what do they talk about? Like peace on earth, heaven on earth? I, I think, I feel like we're moving, you know, back into that time and it's, uh, and it's happening. It's, uh, so the hundredth monkey is like a healthy, contagious, yeah. positive. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing too, I want to just speak with you, Ross, on is, you know, I think probably because of so many of the clients I've worked with have a lot of anger and frustration about whether it's misdiagnosis or over, over medication it gets challenging to, to, as I think of the hundredth monkey phenomenon, it gets challenging to not make it a, a war or a, a battle of some sort, as if, as if the psychopharmological industry and or psychiatrist doctors are, are bad or wrong right. and, and we are good. That, that's not it at all, no. right? It's that, you know, I really do see that there is room for a collaboration because the reality is, yeah, there is places where medications are helpful. And there, Absolutely. You know, not many people know this. When, when uh, psychopharmological medications was first made legal and, and introduced in our culture, it was actually illegal to use for more than six months because it was intended to be a back brace right. while you're working on other therapeutic right. and, and mental health kind of things. Right. And of course, that's all shifted now, mostly from a, from a business standpoint. Right. Uh, but it's something that there, there is a way that this could be a collaborative hundredth monkey phenomenon where everyone could work together and even doctors and psychiatrists could even start to recognize, wait, if we actually do help our patients address the root symptoms, they're ultimately going to heal, yeah. Yeah. which is usually why people start off getting a, an MD or you know, be yeah. getting into that field. They do want to help people. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I, I, I fully agree with that. And that's, I think that too, it's like if we can all come together, I think there's just room for it. It's like, yeah, there is no battle here. You know, there is a place. These medications are meant to be a tool as all these other therapies and forms are meant to be tools as well. And so. Yeah, I think the coming together is the whole point. I mean, we can't, we can't move through this through separation. You know, that just continues more of that struggle. Right. But you know, we all come together. 
yeah, it's just going to be, it's an amazing thing. And so I, I get excited about it. I know that you've been talking to, you know, medical doctors now and, and talking about these yes. somatic therapies and I think just waking them up to new possibilities. And I just think as, as everyone just gets woken up on all sides of the fence, then yeah, there's that room for, you know, everything to amalgamate. And that's, that's an exciting thing. And, you know, it is very exciting, man. And you're right. I'm, I'm meeting more and more doctors almost every day now that are on board with what we're talking about yeah. and, and are aware that the current system has a lot of potholes and, and loopholes yeah. in it. And so you know, I'm excited to, to continue to collaborate with you and any, anyone else out there that's ready to, to collaborate yeah. in, on this mission of waking people up and, and making it from 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 yeah. monkeys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all, all sharing this common vision. Exactly. Yeah. And how amazing, I mean, in a, you know, what a dream it would be where we actually have a system work. Because right now, you know, the way the system's set up through insurances, you know, you got to get your diagnosis first. Once you get a diagnosis, it's only really medication is the root. Yeah, the prescription, yeah. right. So how cool is that if we could actually have, you know, a healthcare system, you know, insurance system where it's a whole, you know, mind-body approach, you know. And once you've had the assessment, then you, yeah, you may or may not get a medication, but you yeah. also get a whatever it is. All these other options. The psychotherapy, the somatic therapies, yeah. yeah that, that's a good dream. I'd like to, I'd like to <laughs> <laughs> pursue Hold that dream that. with you, man, <laughs> definitely. So Ross, there's just uh, one, more, one more question, topic I want to cover with you in our interview today, and, and that's around a, a very common used word in our, in our North American culture, which is stress. And, and before I hear from you, I just want to put it out there and, and set the container as such. Stress is so commonly misconceived that it's a noun, that it's something out there, that it's my kid screaming, it's the freeway, it's my job, it's this and that. Through the lens of neuroscience and neuropsychology, we see stress as a phenomenon, as a way that it, it's really more about a relationship. It's my own relationship with stressors, stressors out there. And, and, if, and if we look through that lens, I'm curious how, how you'd speak to that as someone that it could easily have been diagnosed high stress, anxiety, all the stress and anxiety kind of get paired off together, right? right. But you know, if we really look at stress as a way of how I relate to my environment, the people that I deal with on daily, how does that touch you or how does that uh, get you thinking about yourself as you look back at the years you've spent rewiring your whole nervous right. system? Well, you know, I think stress, I think we're part of what this transition time we're in right now is that this is stressful times. Like there's um, systems and everything that are no longer working are crumbling. Um, we're always hearing about our financial system and how it's just on the brink. You know, so there's all these stressors that I think we're all dealing with. Yeah. Uh, you just culturally. non-stop, culturally, yeah. everything. And I think that's just part of the rebirth we're going through and, and what we have to move through. So, you know, I just think it's, again, it's part of like what are, I know, I know for me personally, it's like, you know, I just look at, well, you know, what are my tools that allow me to still, because stress is going to happen, you know? And as, you know, the fun thing is, is that as life is expanding, guess what, there's more stresses, you know, there's more to deal with, you know? So I just gotta, I feel like I'm always kind of, you know, expanding and working with what is my toolbox so that I can always stay in a grounded place no matter what is being thrown at me. And I think it's kind of like, I think it's all of our duties just because I don't think stress is gonna lighten necessarily. I right. think, we're, you know, everything is still moving faster, quicker, technology, I mean, we've got. But then I'm hearing you though, the idea is if you, because you've spent a lot of time and energy now on, on building tools and, and learning about yourself, you feel better equipped to deal with the many cultural and personal stressors that come out you every day Whereas when you were in the moments where you were uh, believing that you were bipolar and under that diagnosis, right. your attitude is more of like, oh, I don't, I don't know how to deal with stress or, or I'm just stressed or the world's got me down. Right. Am, am I understanding correctly? Absolutely, yeah. And, 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 and also too, just and I have this diagnosis, so I just, I guess this is just part of the deal. This is just part of my diagnosis yeah. is I'm, I'm always stressed or yeah. I, just, I feel stressed so strong. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so then, then it, does, it does resonate with what I said in the beginning, that it, it's what I'm hearing you say is the more you learn how to relate to stress differently and to have the tools for it, the less that it weighs you down and leads you to believe you're, you're crazy or you exactly. need, need meds or whatever it exactly. is, right? Yeah, it's just it's really better reframing, you know? And I, I think, you know, one of my, in going through the process, one of the things that was a, probably a huge piece for me, and I want to say, like, you know, I detox to lithium, February 6, 2010, I'll never forget, it's like a birthday for me. And it was really, it, what the process was, it was like, part of it was the psychological component too, like, you know, I would still have these moments where I would have a challenging day or things would be challenging, like, 
oh my goodness, maybe I really am bipolar, or maybe I'm missing, you know, and keep reverting back. Maybe to they're right. Yeah. yeah, and it was really, it was, I want to say it was about year four, so we're talking like last year, you know, and this is why I say to people, it's like, just know that this is a process. It's a journey. Yeah, and that by year four, it's like, it was amazing to me, it's like, things would happen, tough day, stressful day, challenging day, but it, all of a sudden I reached that point where I was just like, never reverted to, oh my gosh, am I sick? I finally got to the point where things can happen. I'm like, it's not about any sickness or illness, it's just that, guess what? Life has challenges, right. life has disappointments, life has frustrations, life also has joy and all these other great things too, but it, it was no longer about attaching something like something was wrong with me or I was disordered. I was just more able to go, this is part of the whole spectrum of life experience, and that was, that was a huge part of the healing for me, you know, and it's something that just, um, again, when working with clients and, or, or just through any kind of educational process, it's like, to me, because that was such a huge epiphany for me, it's like I try and, you know, plant those seeds and impart that early because the moment that yes. people are able to get yeah. that piece, it's, you know, it's a huge, huge shifting point. Yeah. And to bring this back to where you started answering this question, we are in a culture right now that does have way more stress than, you know, 100 yeah. years ago, whatever it is, the speed of our world. We're also in a culture that, that has taught us and continues to teach us over and over quick fixes. Let's get that air temperature control just yep. right. Let's yep. get the exact food we want very easily. So there, there's also a level at which our culture and, and, and uh, traditions are not at all encouraging right now. It's changing, but it, they're not encouraging us to be okay with a disappointment, to be okay with sitting in traffic, to be okay with dealing with the screaming kids, right? That's, it's part of the human condition, yeah. but we're acculturated to think, no, we should have it just how we want it, just right, right all now. the time, <laughs> right now, yeah. give me that. And I think you're right, that's something that, that we've got to all wake up to, yep. is to live an actual real human life is about suffering, is about disappointment. It's also about joy and connection, yep. but to only, to think we're only going to get the good part of that sets us up for yep getting ready to get that diagnosis yep. and to get that prescription. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. And just that, yeah, I think that the, the journey, and it doesn't necessarily, you know, I hear the word, it's, it's work, but, you know, I, I think for me too is about reframing that as well. It's just that it became so enjoyable to start to uncover, you know, these traumas or to start to, like, feel like, you know, get some, you know, natural nutraceuticals and supplementation and feel what that was like to get the body working better. It's like, it gets this point where it, it no longer becomes work, it more becomes like a joy to be like, you know, you, you, I went from a place of like detoxing to rebuilding, and now it's like the fun part where, and, you know, and I'd love it, I get to share this with clients too, it's like, yes, there's a period for that, and then you do that and you stabilize, and, and guess what, the next stage is that, what are all the things I can incorporate into my life to get to a place of thriving? Mm -hmm. And then you just wanna see how can I thrive and be balanced and, you know, raise my energy levels, and then that becomes another level of fun. And it's all just enjoying all the stages along the way. You know? Yeah, that reminds me of one of my favorite teachings that one of my teachers imparted to me is, there's happiness and sadness, joy encompasses it all. Right. Enjoy, to enjoy something is like, I'm okay with it. I'm not necessarily happy that I'm sitting in traffic right now, right. but I can enjoy it because I know how to deal with it now, and maybe I spend that time listening to my favorite audio book or right. thinking about how much I appreciate my family or whatever it is, yeah. right? So it's, it's moving to that joy state to be okay with happiness and sadness and anything in between that really shifts our relationship with, with stress, as it's called, right? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. You know, and just to the whole thing of, you know, other little tricks for me, like the whole thing of gratitude and forgiveness, you know, and having those be kind of like a, a natural practice that became a daily practice, you know, and when right. those things started getting incorporated too, then that was just something that was like building a nice foundation as well to the point where it just, as opposed to having to think about going into gratitude or forgiveness, it just became like riding a bike and became natural. But it was like, and initially it was like work to kind of just rewire the programming, rewire the neural nets to go, okay, this is now the, my new way of being. Yeah. It's amazing, man. <laughs> and on this idea of, of reframing neural circuitry and, and rewriting programs up in our brain. I'm wondering, you know, in case any of our, our viewers out there are in a similar situation that you found yourself in 20 years ago, whether they've been diagnosed by a doctor or whether they've self-diagnosed themselves with ADHD or whatever it is, I'm just wondering what words of wisdom and or insight you could give to them knowing that you've been in, been in their shoes in many ways. But, you know what, number one I would say just if people can just be open to the journey you know, we're all unique individuals. Um, 
and we're all different, you know. And it just it also means because we're unique individuals that it's going to be a unique journey, and it's going to be a unique set of circumstances and therapies that are going to allow that person to kind of really, you know, find their way back to wholeness. So, you know what? It's just it's a case of you know I sometimes have people say, well, you know, do you want to, um, you know, can I, should I just be doing what you did? And I'm like, you know what? Maybe some of the tools and the things I figured out, maybe they'll be useful right, to you. Right. But you know what? But it's really just about once you open yourself to the possibility of going on the journey that you want to, you know, find your way back to wholeness, then just let, you know, intuition, let your body be your guide yes. and just be open to the doors that just open, you know, and it's just so that's how it went. And uh, I think just everyone has that opportunity to do it. And as long as you have the drive to never give up, which was my drive, I was never going to get up until I got to the bottom of this then that was it. And even during the, the tough times, the challenging times, the dark times, that driver of never giving up I think is just what allowed me to push through. And, uh, you know, thank goodness, because it's, um, you know, it's really fun to be able to pay it forward now and, and give this information back and, and, yeah, and see the light come on in others is the, uh, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> it's priceless. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Ross, for your time and energy, brother, and I Jesse, really appreciate thank you. it. And yep. I love doing this. Man. Love working with you. <laughs>